Today we are going to learn the derivatives of the trig functions. The derivatives of the trig functions. Now there is no methodology to find the derivatives of the basic six of them, but we're going to figure out ways to do it. Or go around that. Yes, ma'am. We sure did not. Okay. I will go back and do that at the end of the notes. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. Okay. All right. We are going to start with sine because sine is the most basic, one of the two most basic trig functions. I would like to sketch it right here. I think most of you, or some of you at least, have a general remembrance, vague remembrance of what sine looks like. It starts mid. It starts mid and it does the wave. Mid, high, mid, low, mid. Many, wait, huh. my happy mother loves me. That's the one we used in my class. My happy mother loves me. Y'all remember this? Champions start high. Oh, I like that. Champions start high. Okay, over here, I'm going to write ddx of sine of x. Now, with sine, I can't use product rule. I can't use quotient rule. I can't use chain rule. There's no rule to use to find the derivative of sine. So what we're going to do is we're going to find it in kind of an investigative way. And this is probably how the mathematicians did it as well. So let me go in here and clear out all the stuff in my calculator. I'm going to put my calculator right here so you can see it. What I'd like you to do is take your calculator and please type sine of x into y1. And I would like you to press zoom 7. Zoom 7 is the standard trig window. Zoom 7. Sine of x. Does it match your picture? It should. Okay. Please do me another favor and make sure your calculator is in radians. If you're in physics, you might have changed the degrees for something. And then you need to re-graph. You need to push. Zoom. If you change it from ra degrees to radians, you're going to need to repress zoom seven because once we do the derivative, it's going to mess everything up. Okay. All right. Is everybody good here? Okay. All right. Now, here's what I need you to do second. Listen carefully. Go back to y equals for me. We are going to use n deriv to find the derivative of sine and graph it. Okay? That was the, like the skydiving problem we did the other day where we had to graph the velocity and the acceleration even though we didn't know how to take the derivative. We're going to do the same thing here. So I need you to push the buttons that create n deriv. Do you remember what that is? Math 8. Math 8. Now, my calculator is in 83 mode. So if you have an 83, watch me. I'm going to do yours first. You need to put Y1 in here. So Y1, again, is the VARS key. Y VARS. Are you all listening? Push Enter twice. Comma, X, comma, X, close the parentheses. That's what you need to push if you have an 83. All right? Okay, I'm going to now switch my calculator to 84 mode and show you what it should look like there. It's going to automatically switch everything. DDX of Y1 and then X equals X. The Y1 is alpha, trace, enter. So in the parentheses, make sure you're sitting in the parentheses, right here, you push alpha, trace, and enter, and it puts the Y1 in there. Okay? Now, do not push graph yet. Do not push graph yet. Okay, anybody need assistance? Okay, what I need you to do now is to go and turn off the sign graph. Do not erase it, turn it off. Do you know how to do that? Go to the equal sign, hover on the equal sign, push enter, and then come down. And notice that the equal sign is now not with a black box around it. That means that graph is turned off. The information's still there, but it's not going to graph it. Now push graph. Push just graph. Okay? going to be slow because it's calculating the derivative at every point of the sine equation. Alpha trace enter. Okay, what graph do you see? Cosine. Is that cosine? Yes, it is. It is cosine. So, we have just discovered that
that the derivative of sine is cosine. That's kind of nice. So let's sketch that right here. Cosine starts high. High, mid, low, mid, high. Hungry Martians love McDonald's hamburgers. What? That's the high, mid, low, mid, high. Hungry Martians love McDonald's hamburgers. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, these trig derivatives have got to become what I call muscle memory. I want you to think for a minute. If I asked you to write out the steps to solve the equation 2x plus 1 equals 11, would you really have to think about what you were doing? No. You have done it so much that you could just do it. Okay? I was telling my second period, and I'll tell this story in here as well. Um, a friend of mine was watching an episode of a TV show called Castle. And in this show, it was a very interesting storyline where there was a person who had total amnesia, could not remember who he was, where he was from, anything. But the person who was examining him gave him a piece of paper and said, sign your name, and he did it without even thinking. Because his signature and most of your signatures are muscle memory. You don't think about what you're writing, you just write it. So even though he didn't know what his name was, he could write his name. And they looked at it and went, oh, your name is whatever. You know, your name's John, because they saw it in his signature, as long as the signature was legible. Okay? These derivatives have got to become muscle memory. You've got to be able to do low D high. You've got to be able to do 1D2, 2D1 without even thinking about it and having to stop and go, okay, what was it again? Blah, 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 blah. The more you've practiced this, the more muscle memory it becomes. Those of you who've learned foreign languages, it's the same thing. If you are getting fluent in a language, you don't have to think of, sit down and think about what every single word means. You can just hear the sentence and go, oh, it means blah, 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 blah. And it just all flows together. Okay? So, you derivative of sine, and you say cosine. Okay, everybody say it. What's derivative of sine? Cosine. What's derivative of sine? Cosine. Just, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine. Okay. The more you say something, the more it sticks in your brain. It does. I promise you. Okay? Now, let's move on. We're going to do the same thing with the derivative of cosine. Okay? Now, this is not going to be very hard. We only have to make one slight change in the calculator, and we will figure out what the derivative of cosine is. So, what I want you to do is go back to y equals, change y1 to cosine. Just type cosine over the sine. Okay? The second in line, we're not going to touch it, because the second line says just take the derivative of the first line. But we need to go turn cosine back off. Go turn cosine off. Now push graph. Do you see something that looks familiar? Okay, it is not sine. It is negative sine. Okay, actually it's not, it's not inverse either. Inverse is the one that graphs down this way. Inverse is the one that graphs vertically. Sine inverse and, and negative sine are not the same thing. Okay? This is negative sine because it's sine flipped over the x-axis. So we're going to write down that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And I'm going to sketch it real quickly. It goes mid, low, mid, high, mid. Okay. Derivative of sine is what? What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. What's the derivative of sine? sine. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative, Negative sine. sine. It's like your times test. Another one. Great example. Times tables. Do you have to sit down and think about what 8 times 8 is? I hope not. Okay. I hope you don't. Um, um, not. Okay. My son, even though he's a sophomore, I'll say, what's 5 times 9? He'll go 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, and he'll count them out. I'm like, no, no, you've got to memorize it. Drives me crazy. Okay, now, real quickly, before I write anything down, I want to do the same thing with tangent and see if I recognize the graph. So go back into here, change it to tangent, go back and turn it off, and then graph it. <laughs> I have a second grade student delivery. 
third grade student from Peru, who went for second, and second grade student from Peru, who went for third. And these are just the third grade Okay. Does that look like any trick graph you've seen before? Yours looks like that. Okay, yours is drawing asymptotes in. There are asymptotes in there. Okay, that is not a standard tree graph. So we're going to have to do this another way. Okay, can you all stop talking, please? Okay, you're, if you're, yours may have lines in it. Does it have lines in it? Take a look. Okay, figured it out. All right, now. Since that does not look like anything I'm familiar with, we're going to have to do this another way. So turn your calculator off for now. We're going to tackle this one algebraically. So right here, I'm going to write y equals tangent of x. So tangent didn't come out to be something pretty. We're going to actually use algebra, or calculus actually, to find the derivative of tangent because we now know sine and cosine. Can you write tangent in terms of sine and cosine? What does tangent equal? Sine over, cosine. sine over cosine. So I'm changing tangent to sine over cosine, and I can take the derivative of that using the quotient, quotient rule. Exactly. So y prime equals, draw a big fraction bar. Okay. Now hopefully you're getting to the point where I say quotient rule and your brain says low D high without even thinking about it. Okay. So, low is cosine, x. Make sure you put the x's on there. Very important that you do. What is d high? No, no, no. What's the derivative of sine? Just plain cosine. So, cosine of x. Low d high. Minus. Okay, high is sine. Shh, hang on a minute. What is d low? What's the derivative of cosine? Negative, negative sine. So we're going to put negative sine in a parentheses right there over low squared. So cosine x in parentheses squared. All right? Okay. Next step. Y prime equals. What's another way to write cosine times cosine? Cosine squared. Cosine squared. Put the squared inside of the cosine like so. Now negative sine times negative sine positive sine squared x over now that this on the bottom is still cosine squared x okay can I cancel the cosine squared oh I'm hearing some controversy in here can those two cancel raise your hand if you think no they can't no Okay, raise your hand if you think, yes, they can. Boy, a lot of you are juries out on this one, huh? They can't. Okay, you think they can't, Michelle. Tell me why. Because of the adding. Okay, think of this problem. 3 plus 2 over 3. Can you cancel those 3s? No. No. So you can't cancel the cosine squares either. Okay, this is a no. Okay, there are two ways to go from here. One way is to separate it into two separate fractions, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But there's actually an easier way than that. Okay, look at the top of this right here. If you've watched the Magic Hexagon video, you should know what that is. What is cosine squared plus sine squared equal? One. Y prime equals one over cosine squared. That is a, that's a, it is, it's a takeoff on the Pythagorean identity. It really is. It's a trig identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. That's where I was going next. Okay. One over cosine, forget the square for a minute, is secant. The reciprocal of so cosine is secant squared x. So we have just found that that funky graph we just saw happens to be secant squared. I, I, I thought so just by looking at Did it. Did you really? <laughs> okay. Now, if you remember the secant and cosecant graphs, there were some trig graphs we did last year. It was one parabola up and then one parabola down, and then one parabola up and one parabola down. Remember that? We had one up and then one down. What happened? The squared flipped everything up. So it was just parabola, 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 parabola. That's why the graph looked like it did. Okay? 
That's why this graph, let me put it on the video so everybody can see, the down parabola flipped up. So they're all up above. That's what made it do that. So that is secant squared, by the way. Okay? Now, this is taking a while, so I'm not going to go through and do this with the other, other three. I'm just going to give them to you. So you've seen now three of these. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Okay, there are patterns to this. So let me go ahead and write down all six of them. And you need to write these down as well. This is a piece of paper that you're going to be referring back to for this entire worksheet until they start just becoming second nature. The derivatives of the six trig functions, dot, dot. Okay, as you write that down, let me just talk. There are six trig functions, but in reality, if you see the patterns, you only have to memorize three of them. Okay, because the other three are just slight changes of the first three. Okay, so if you see what those changes are, you'll just go back to the one that goes with it and go, oh, I'm supposed to just change that and that will be good. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, first we're going to do d dx sine of x. We're going to go ahead and bring these other ones down. The derivative of sine is, you tell me, cosine. cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Negative sine. Okay, I'm going to stop right there for just a minute. Notice a couple things. When I say the word co-function, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. What do you think the co-function of secant is? Co-secant. What's the co-function of tangent? Co-tangent. So the co-function of sine is cosine. Okay. They go together with their pairs. Sine goes with cosine, tangent goes with cotangent, secant goes with cosecant. Okay. A function and its co-function have very similar derivatives. Rule number one: If a function, if a trig function starts with the word co or the the phrase co its tr derivative will be negative. So the derivative of cosine, cotangent, and cosecant will all be negative. So does the derivative of negative sine x equal negative cosine x? Yes, it does. We'll be doing some more of those in a minute. Okay, now move down here. Derivative of tangent of x, we just did, is secant squared of x. Now, Using what I just told you and the fact that these two derivatives are co-function. Let's see if we can just figure out what this one's going to be. Negative, negative, negative cosecant squared. Exactly. It is negative cosecant squared of x. It's negative because it's a co. And the, the co-function that goes with secant is cosecant. So secant squared changes to cosecant squared. That's reciprocals. This is derivatives. I know. One more thing to remember. Okay. Now, let's move over to secant. I haven't even done this one. Now, I could. This is how the mathematicians did it. Secant is 1 over cosine. So I could put 1 over cosine and do high d low to that and figure out what it's going to be. But I'll just tell you. I'm not going to do all the math to go with it. It happens to be secant of x times tangent of x. You just need to memorize that. That's the one you've got to memorize. Derivative of secant has itself in the derivative. That's kind of strange, but it does. Derivative of secant of x is secant of x tangent of x. Now, using the process we did a minute ago, let's see if we can come up with cosecants. It's going to be negative. Not the same thing. The co-functions times cotangent of x. Now, why did I not make them both negative? Because if I had, it would have been back to a positive. The negative goes just in the front of the whole thing. Okay? You see how that's the co and the co? You see how that works? So if you can memorize just this one, this one, and that one, the rest of them just come if you know the tricks. Yeah. All right? Any questions so far? Okay. Like I said, a week from Monday, you will have a formulas quiz. I can guarantee you, guarantee you, that there will be at least a couple of these on there that I will ask you to just tell me. What's derivative of sine? What's derivative of tangent? A week from Monday. A week from Monday. Monday is the second half of your test. Monday after...
Homecoming? Yes, ma'am. Well, you'll be, you'll be, you, okay, Michelle, you'll be using them so much in the next few days, yeah. they're going to start becoming second nature. Okay, now we're going to practice. Go to the next, I'm going to the next piece of paper. You're going to want this handy to refer back to. Okay, time to practice. Example, y equals 2 sine of x. Now this is what the worksheet's going to look like. We're going to start simple and work our way up. We like it when that goes that way. Okay, this is the simplest problem on the page. What do you think the derivative of 2 sine of x is going to be? 2 cosine of x. Very good. You did the problem. Yay for us. Move over to the right and write this down. Y equals parentheses 2 sine of x, the quantity squared. Let's just take it and square that thing and see what happens. Not exactly. Okay, stop for a minute. This one needs a rule. Which rule does it need? Outer inner, chain rule. It needs outer inner. It needs chain rule because you have a sine surrounded by a square. Okay, so outer is the square, inner is the 2 sine x, which we already took the derivative of. We can just plug it in when we get there. y prime equals, let's remember how to do this. Chain rule is take the derivative of the outer, so that's going to be what first? 2 parentheses to the first. Now I'm going to go ahead and write the first just this once. What goes inside? 2 sine x, the 2 and the sine of x, times the derivative of the inner, which I did over here. 2 cosine x. Okay? Now, everything is to the first power, yes? Which means I can just, re everything's multiplied too, so I can just rearrange it pretty much any way I want to. Let's take all those constants and multiply them together. What do you get? 8. Sine of x and cosine of x are like x and y. You can't multiply them together, so we just put them side by side. Sine of x, cosine of x. And that is the answer right there. Chain rule is actually pretty easy. It is once you get the hang of it. It's taken me about 12 years of teaching to come up with the best way to explain it, and now I finally got it. And it, it really is fitting together nicely. As soon as somebody showed me the M&M &M analogy for the chain rule, it just made a total difference in how I teach it. I really like it. Okay. Y equals sine of 2x. Now let's move the 2 in there. Okay. Okay. Here is a question for you. Is this a product rule problem? I can see why, you, why some people would say yes and some people would say no. Okay. The answer is no, and here's why. How many x's do you see here? One. one. If there is only one x, it is definitely not product rule. Okay? But it is something else. Because it, it is the first chain rule problem we've ever had where the outer is not a power. The outer is what? The outer is sine, and the inside is the 2x. So watch this. Outer is sine... And inner is 2x. I'm sorry I'm squeezing it in here, but I ran out of room on my last thing and I didn't want to go to a new sheet of paper. Okay. Y prime equals... Okay. What's the derivative of the outer? Cosine of parentheses. Okay. And what goes in the parentheses? 2x times the derivative of the inner, which is 2. Okay. Next question. Can I multiply the twos together? No. no. And I think you've been taught in the past, just don't do it. Let me kind of explain a little bit as to why. Okay? What comes after a cosine has a name, and it's called an argument. And I don't know if your teachers ever use that. A cosine is an operation, just like a radical. So it's like that 2x is inside of a square root and the 2 is not. You can't combine them. Okay? That's part of the argument. That is not. But where can the 2 go? In front. In the front. So that's where I'm going to put it. Y prime equals 2 cosine of 2x. And that's the final answer right there. Okay? 
All right, I'm going to give you one to try, just like it. Okay, y equals cosine parentheses 3x minus 4. You try it. Okay, so outer is cosine, inner is 3x minus 4. So y prime equals negative sine, parentheses, put in the 3x minus 4, multiply by 3. Y prime equals negative 3, sine 3x minus 4. So you're getting used to these new chain rule problems, and that's good. Okay, next problem. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 more to go. I'm going to go quickly. Y equals tangent of x squared minus 5. Write that one down. Y equals tangent of x squared minus 5. Okay, I'm going to do it with you. It looks like, does it look like the same problem? Not at all. We should do it together. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your, thanks for your input. No, but it, the, is it the same process? Yes. yes. It's an outer and then an inner, right? So let's do it. Outer, if you think you've got it, just go ahead and go to town with it. Tangent, parentheses, inner, x squared minus 5. Y prime equals, everybody's flipping back and forth to look at the derivative of tangent again, and it happens to be what? Secant squared, secant squared, parentheses, x squared minus 5, times the derivative of the inner, which is what? 2x. Now, can I multiply the 2x in there? No, 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 no. Don't do it. Move it in the front. y prime equals 2x secant squared, x squared minus 5. That's that. Okay. All right, here's an interesting problem. Look at this one. Y equals the cosine of the sine of X. Y equals the cosine of the sine of X. That's what we got to think about. Okay, from what I told you about 10 minutes ago, is this a product rule problem? No. 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 Brittany, tell me why. Like There's only one x, so it's not product rule. This has to be chain rule, because I see two functions in there. I see cosine and sine. So the outer function is cosine, parentheses. The inner function is sine of x. Y prime equals. Okay, you try it. Actually, write it down. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. Hang on, hang on. I'm not going to come check them. I'm going to do it quicker. Does it matter what order the front will apply this problem? No. Okay. Okay, either one of those two is correct. Either one. Yeah, that's all you can do. You cannot write sine and sine as sine squared. Sine squared is sine x times sine x. It's okay got to be both. If you like put the negative in front of the first sign. As long as they're both in parentheses, because otherwise it looks like subtraction. Okay. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, so okay. as long as like, yeah. Okay. All right, two more problems, and I'm going to do them rather quickly. F of x equals x squared times cotangent of x. Hmm. Is that product rule? Yes. Yes. One is not inside the other. They're just side by side, and they're multiplied. So we have to do 1d2 plus 2d1. So f prime of x equals... Copy 1, x squared. Go back in your notes and look. What's the derivative of cotangent? Negative, negative, cosecant. negative cosecant squared of x. Do not leave those x's off. They're very important. 1d2 plus 2, which is cotangent, times d1, 2x. Okay. After you're done doing the derivative, stop and take a look. That's about as different as X and Y night and day. There's nothing I can really combine except just maybe clean it up. 
So let's move the negative to the front. F prime of x equals negative x squared cosecant squared x plus 2x cotangent x. Boy, did I run out of room. Where did I? I see what I did. Okay, I've got to squeeze one more problem in. I'm going to go to a new sheet of paper. It's only three lines long, so if you can fit three lines, you're good. But I've only got two lines here. Okay, everybody done with this? Okay, one more. This one's very, very important. Example, y equals 5 sine cubed of 4x. 5 sine cubed of 4x. Okay. This is what I call a peanut M&M problem. Okay? How many layers does a peanut M&M have? Two. two. When we talked about M&Ms and Skittles the other day, we were... Peanut M&Ms have two layers? Three. They have three. They have the candy shell, the chocolate, and the peanut. Right? Just realize that Skittles and M&Ms, plain M&Ms are only two chocolate and the candy shell, right? But this has an outer and an inner and an even more inner. Okay, look at this. First thing, anytime you're given a problem to take the derivative and you have this embedded exponent, you've got to move it out and write it this way. Five parentheses, sine parentheses, 4x cubed. It has to be written like that. Okay, so what is the most outer function? Five and the third power. That's the outside function. What is the next layer? Sign, parentheses. And what is the innermost layer? 4x. Do you see that? So you have a 4x inside of a sine, which is inside of a cube. Yes, Wait, you do. Why, why, why can't we just randomly move the cube to the... Because that's what it means. When you see sine squared x, that means sine x, the quantity squared. We moved them in and out when we were doing pre-cal last year. It's been a while. So okay. you just have to know that when you see that? Yeah, you have to just see it. You have to see the layers. I don't know if this is like... Um, Hold on, just a second. What were you going to say, Maggie? I don't know if this is like a dumb question, but on the last one, why didn't we like add the exponents like we usually do? On the last like, one, let me take a look. Because the squared is on the cosecant, not on the x. Um, That's why. Okay? What were you going to say, Kyle? Uh, so then we just do the, the first two inner, then we get the outer. I'll show you. Hang on just a minute. Okay, let's do this together. Watch very carefully. These will come up quite a bit. Y prime equals, okay, so when you do this, you do the outer first just like before. What's the derivative of five parentheses cubed? 15 parentheses squared. Now, what goes in the parentheses? Everything below that, all of the inners that you have not taken the derivative of yet. So everything goes in here, the sine and the 4x, okay, times. Now we do the derivative of the first inner layer. Derivative of sine of something is cosine of something. And what goes in here? Just the 4x, because the 4x is the only thing I have not taken the derivative of yet. Now times the derivative of the last layer. And since there's nothing left after that, you're done. So do you see what we did? Took the derivative of the outer, put everything inside. Then we took the derivative of the second layer, put just what's left inside, and then we took the derivative of that. Now we need to clean this up. Y prime equals? 60. It's going to be a 60, the 15 and the 4. 60 cosine. Okay, we're going to take that squared, we're going to put it back where it came from. So it's going to be sine squared, parentheses, 4x, and then cosine of 4x. It doesn't matter which trig function is first, no. Yeah, it's really, it's not bad. 